The name's Smith. John Smith. I'm a detective. The pay isn't great. Work's hard to come by, but it keeps me on the streets. I look through my files when business gets slow. I've gotten to know them pretty well. As I read about a past case, memories crowd into my mind. Memories of a past case. Business had been slow. I hadn't had a case for weeks. My savings were lower than the blood count of a mummy. I was taking my regular morning walk to my office, until suddenly, I found a nickel. As I was reaching for it, I noticed someone sleeping on the sidewalk. At first, I planned not to disturb her, but then, it hit me. Is this your nickel, ma'am? Then I saw the knife in her back. I checked her pulse. She was dead. Immediately, I suspected suicide. The police arrived on the scene soon after I notified them of my discovery. All right, Smith. This is a serious crime. It should be handled by serious investigators. We'll take it from here. That's right, Smith. We can take care of this. We don't need your help. I didn't understand their concern. It looked like an open-shut case to me. However, I decided to try to return the knife, which was obviously misplaced, to its rightful owner. The least I could do was right this one small wrong. In the newspaper the next morning, I discovered that the girl's name had been Cheryl Buxom. She'd been a popular model for a local ad agency and still lived with her parents. Their address was given in the paper, so I visited them in hope of catching a lead as to who owned the knife. Helen, this is Smith. John Smith. He's a detective. Oh, hello, Mr. Smith. Ma'am, I'd like to ask you a few questions about yesterday morning. All right. Have you ever seen this knife before? I found it in your daughter's back. No! <laughs> How about these initials? Do you know anybody who has them? ZBZ. Can't say that I do. No. Did your daughter have any acquaintances you think might own it? Well... Anyone at all? Well, there was the neighbor's boy, little Charlie up the street. He showed an interest in knives. How close of an acquaintance was he to your daughter? Well, he, uh, he used to send her notes. She'd never let us read them. In fact, she hardly ever read them herself. Usually threw them away unopened. But he was such a friendly boy. He used to follow her around, never saying a word. Oh, that's all in the past now. <laughs> the guy's name is Charlie up the street? That's right. Where's he living? Well, he just moved yesterday. I was working at the post office when he gave his forwarding address. We wanted to keep him on our Christmas card mailing list, so, so I jotted it down. Here. Up the street, it moved to a completely different part of town. The morning was almost over when I finally found him in an overripe dump on the east side. What do you want? The name's Smith. I want to ask a few questions concerning Miss Cheryl Buxom. Cheryl's been murdered. She's dead! Uh, what about her? She's dead, Mr. Up the Street. I'm a private detective. Never heard of her. I've never heard of her. Well? Huh. Do you know anything about this? No! I've never seen it before. Uh, <clears throat> honest. How about these initials? Have you ever run across them before? Z, B, Z. A, a rather distinct combination, isn't it? 
I've never seen them before. Thanks for the sincere cooperation, Mr. Up the Street. Hope I haven't ruined your day with the bad news. Goodbye. I spent that night in my office, thinking. The case was going nowhere. My only lead had turned up false. The case was sinking in a swirling morass of mystery. resolve to finish the case increased by almost a fifth after that late night ordeal. I paid the parents a second visit the next morning, hoping to nose up some fresh information. Who are some other close acquaintances of your daughter, Mrs. Buxton? Oh, she had lots of friends. There was John Jones and Jane Smith and Anne White. Oh, and of course, the big news, Zaginski. Would you repeat that last one, ma'am? The big news, Zaginski. What was his middle name, then? Oh, I believe it was Bartholomew. Yes, I'm sure it was, because he always insisted on being called by his full name. ZBZ. The same initials as on the handle of the knife. This was rapidly beginning to look like a clue. But there was still one question. Why didn't you mention him before? Well, we did, actually. You see, he changed his name to Charlie up the street just yesterday. So, Zakinski and up the street are the same guy? That's right. Such decisions should be honored. So we called him by his chosen name. I saw it when he changed his address. I thought he had a fine name. I can't imagine why he changed it. Me neither. A profound philosophical puzzle was before me. What possible motive could he have for doing such a thing? Perhaps, I reasoned, he was entering show business. I went to his apartment to clear this contradiction, but was hit with another stab of bad luck. What do you want? I want to talk to Charlie up the street. Who? Uh, you got the wrong place, buddy. There ain't no up the street here. He used to live here. I just saw him yesterday. Could be. I just moved in here last night. Do you know where he went? How should I know? Go ask the landlady. The landlady didn't know either. Desperately, I searched for up the street's new residence. My investigative skills were fully utilized as I perused all avenues of information leading to his whereabouts. Soon I was reduced to randomly knocking on doors, hoping that he'd answer. Early one morning I finally found the place. It was a seedy room on the west side of town. Up the street seems surprised to see me again. You again? S Smith, isn't it? Just a few more questions, Mr. Zakinski. <gasps> How did you know my name was Zakinski? Miss Buxton's parents told me. I have nothing to do with Cheryl's murder. On the contrary, Mr. Zakinski. I think her death has deeply affected you. No! Maybe in all the confusion you've forgotten that this knife is yours. <gasps> It's not mine! You're sure? I thought I had it figured out. I don't want you asking any more questions. Suddenly I became suspicious. Maybe this so-called suicide wasn't as cut and dried as it seemed. After some quick and thorough thought, it occurred to me that maybe it was an accident. After more quick and thorough thought, I dropped the idea. I continued with the questioning. Where were you on the night of Miss Buxton's death? Uh, nowhere. 
Nowhere, I mean, around here. Where were you? I was at church. Oh, which one? I, oh, I'm not really sure. Uh, I was busy uh, giving a sermon. And you don't know where you were? Well, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't really a church. What <clears> was it? Oh, uh, a restaurant. Oh. Yes. Uh, a restaurant uh, with a stained glass window in front. I see. A restaurant, a, a Chinese restaurant, on the, on the corner of 6th and Vine. What time? All night. I was there all night. I didn't go anywhere else. I went to the restaurant early in the evening and left late the next morning. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Didn't do what? I just remembered I, I forgot to do my laundry. <laughs> oh. Up the street story seemed solid, so I was left without a lead. I hadn't eaten yet and had a craving for Chinese food, so I decided to visit the joint he'd mentioned. It must be top-notch if he liked it enough to stay there a whole night. What can I do for you? I'll have a hamburger with a side order of rice. What? Food. This is a restaurant, isn't it? It's a laundromat. Look, buddy, I've had a hard day. I don't need any jokers to add to my grief. But he said, are you sure? Look, I've owned this place for years. You think I don't know what it is? No napkins, silverware, plates? It's a laundromat, see? After examining the evidence, I concluded that this was indeed a laundromat. I'd thought that Easy Clean was a strange name for a restaurant. I was beginning to suspect the Sikinski character. I drove to his apartment for a final round of questioning, hoping to settle the matter of the knife once and for all. Hello, Mr. Smith. Nice to see you. Won't you come in? I want the truth. What? Oh, no. What do you already have? There's no Chinese restaurant at the address you gave me. It's a laundromat. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say laundromat. Yes. Chinese laundromat. It wasn't a Chinese laundromat. It must have been a different place. Yes. What with same street names, but different town. Different different town entirely. What city? Oh, uh, I don't know. It, it could be anywhere. P possibly Mi Miami. That's over a thousand miles away. But, I drove yes. over, over the, the speed limit. That's breaking the law, Mr. Up the Street. <laughs> it was my first time. My first time. Honest. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't count, does it? Your first time at driving? Well, no. I it think was... you're lying. No. You're the owner of this knife, aren't you, Mr. Zekinski? No. no, it's not mine. I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Okay, freeze! That's him, man. Look out, he's on Get him out of here! Sheriff! Sheriff! My love! It can't end like this! We've been chasing you around the city for the past few days for taking evidence from the scene of a crime. It was lucky for you we caught up with you when we did, or you would have been dead. Well, you may have found the murderer, but I still have to arrest you. That character's coming along, too. I think he has a few things to explain. 
To my surprise, Charlie up the street was put on trial and found guilty of the murder of Cheryl Buxton. The next day he escaped and went into hiding. Four months later, he was picked up for loitering in New Mexico, for which he got 10 to life. Never did find the owner of the knife.